Your time now is 940. Indy Peace, in collaboration with IU Health Methodist Hospital, announcing just last week the official launch of the Indy Peace Hospital Linked Violence Intervention Program. This comes after its pilot program was launched back in April. Now, the hope with this is to reduce the likelihood of future violence by engaging with victims as they're being treated in the hospital. It marks the state's first collaborative violence intervention program with a hospital. This is a very important program. Joining me to talk about this this morning, we have Mary Alexander with the Indy Public Safety Foundation and Tiffany Davis with IU Health Methodist Hospital uh, to talk about this really needed program here in Indianapolis. It's also very unique. We said it's the first one uh, like this. So as we're kind of diving into this topic, part of this and a really big part of this is actually the NDP life coaches within IU. They're the ones who are directly talking with these patients while they're in the hospital. How do you guys choose these life coaches? How are they trained? Kind of what are their qualifications to make them fit for this? Sure. So our life coaches um, are with the Indy, Indy Peace Program mm -hmm. and we have been uh, established for the last two and a half years. We've been working in the community um, looking at um, providing gun violence uh, education, working with individuals. Our life coaches, our violence interrupters, and um, our outreach workers are all what we call credible messengers in that we look specifically at um, the targeted areas that have high gun violence mm -hmm. and we look at hiring individuals from that community so that they know the individuals that we're talking to, they feel comfortable in that community, they know the resources, and so that's how we look at individ individuals that we hire in as life coaches, is that they probably at some point served as mentors mm -hmm. in some capacity, but they're also very connected to the community, and we call them credible messengers. Got it, so it is a familiar face with the person oh, yeah. who's experiencing, you know, this difficult moment. So kind of what exactly. are the, I know you guys have multiple programs that you actually provide for the support, what are those? Sure, so within Indy Peace, we have our life coaches who provide um, resources to mental health. Um, essentially, we're providing them with a mentor that's walking them through uh, everything that they would need to help them support and get back to um, having a healthy life, having, you know, fostering hope, and having some community impact um, for those individuals. And so they might be helping them get their driver's license, they might be helping them uh, get a job, getting housing, all of those things. And you know, when we're talking, go ahead. One additional service we were able to add just in the recent month was um, therapy for okay. these patients as well. Which is very important, I think, especially if we're talking about intervening and not making this then a cycle that these young people go through, you have to help them deal mm -hmm. with these things so they're not repeating it. Exactly, so that's the main goal is that we're looking at um, individuals who are victims of gun violence have, it's a very high instance of repeat violence. Mm -hmm. And so this whole, initiative is to decrease that uh, repeat violence, um, again, to work with the individual and their families to help them move forward with their lives. Yeah. And I think this program itself is, it addresses a gap that we haven't, um, that we've been looking at, that we've been wanting to address, and it's a wonderful initiative in that we are able to go into the hospital, talk to that individual right after the um, incident, whereas before, we would be in that we would actually go out to a gun, like there was a gun violence um, incident, our violence interrupters would go to the scene, they would talk to the community, mm -hmm. that individual would probably go to the hospital. We weren't able to talk to that individual until they were released, right. and sometimes that would be weeks later. And so now we're able to go into the bedside, talk to these individuals, provide the support, refer them to a social worker immediately. So it's a wonderful example of having those healthcare resources mm -hmm. right there and then also having the community resources available. And do you feel like when you're intervening so soon before maybe they're able to get back into what could be a bad situation with potentially bad influences to exactly. continue that violence, do you feel it increases your chances of maybe preventing at least that one instance from moving forward? Oh, definitely. I think that, you know, when you're talking to an individual who just, you know, maybe 24 hours before had been shot, that's a key point in their life where they're thinking about their choices that they've made in their life and how can they turn around. And if you have somebody at the bedside saying, hey, I've been through that situation, our mm -hmm. life coaches might have actually been shot, might have actually been a victim of gun violence, they're like, I can help you with this and we can walk through it. And so that's, that's very important because they're at that point while they're in the hospital where they want to turn this around. Right, so talk a little bit, why is the hospital setting so critical when you're talking about community violence intervention? 
Yeah, so just like Mary said, right after um, an injury occurs, we, sometimes we refer to that as the teachable moment. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just the moment in somebody's life where they might do some internal reflection and um, consider change um, for whatever that might be for them. Um, and so getting um, services to those patients as soon as possible is very critical. And then that's our role as the hospital, right, is to treat. And so we can treat physically, and we're really good at that, but mm -hmm. this is improving our ability to treat more holistically and care for their emotional um, healing as well. Right, because I think when we're talking intervention, I, emotionally is really where we have to intervene in order to get an improvement and yeah. an issue that we're facing. Ladies, thank you so much for talking with us about this this morning. You can learn more <laughs> about the NDP's HVIP online now at fox59.com slash links. We've got everything you need. There you can also be connected to details on how the program is impacting Hoosiers right now and how you can also get involved. Guys, thank you again thank so you. much for joining us. Thank